recording. I'm sure, you know, more people will be kind of rolling here, rolling in here as they get ready, but let's just kind of revisit where we've been so far. Um, we are ending our book clubs for semester one, but we will be doing them again in semester two. It's just the next couple weeks until winter break. Um, we'll be doing some other things like going over the interim tests that you guys took and um, doing some more writing and that kind of thing. But um, we are wrapping up today and we just need to revisit our enduring understanding, which was the big picture. Humans construct, or sorry, use strategies to construct meaning. And really, we were talking mostly about reading strategies, things like making connections, making predictions, and summarizing. We've already, we've talked about those so far this year, and we'll definitely talk about more reading strategies as the year goes on. Um, but this was really how we made meaning of the book. Some of our goals were to communicate and collaborate, to think critically, and to be creative. And you'll notice that we shared our thoughts and our questions about the novel. And today, we're going to take it a step further, and we're going to actually analyze what makes a writing piece good. And we're going to evaluate, if I could type, um, we're going to evaluate a rubric and then writing pieces. So my fingers are really cold, so I'm like <laughs> having a hard time typing this morning. Maybe I need to warm up my hands a little bit here. Okay. So collaboration, that's all of us working together to make our writing better this morning. And think critically about the, um, the rubric that I'm about to show you. So. Okay, here we go. Let's just have a short review of what we learned about last week. We learned um, about topic sentences, detail sentences, and conclusion sentences. I really only focused on one part of a really big writing rubric. A rubric is what you should always look at before you turn in a writing piece because it, it'll show you how to get the highest score. And so far, all that we have looked at or talked about is the organizational part of the six trait writing rubric. To get a five, which is the best score, your paragraph has to be clear and compelling. Compelling just means interesting, okay? So clear and interesting. You have to choose an order that works well and makes the reader want to figure out what comes next. The topic sentence, or the beginning, grabs the reader's attention and gives clues about what's coming up. Every detail adds a little bit more to the main idea. So in other words, if James was wearing a red sweater one day, that's not a really important detail. I need details that add to the main idea, only important details. My details need to be in the right place, so I have to put them in the correct order. And then have a good conclusion or ending. And last week we talked a little bit about conclusions kind of leave you with a feeling, a feeling of the book. So we'll just kind of keep that in mind. And let's just see by a show of thumbs who is ready to learn the steps for peer editing. Who's ready to learn how to peer edit? Dakota, Jaden, are you guys ready? Okay, good. All right, so I have a short little presentation that's going to teach us the steps. All right. Peer edit with perfection. Peer editing is a lot of fun. Working together to improve your writing is fun, and you actually make your writing better, and you learn things from each other. 
A peer is someone your own age, <laughs> so you're all about the same age. And editing is basically changing your, your work. Oops, sorry, I went too far. Three steps. The first step is to give compliments. The second step is to give suggestions. And the third step is to make corrections. Now, it probably seems like steps two and step three are very similar, but they're actually, they're actually different. Your, um, the original writer does not have to take all suggestions and use them. Corrections, however, are things that are absolutely have to be fixed. Okay, I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. Okay, so step one is to have compliments or give compliments. Remember, you're changing somebody's writing. You don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. You want, you want everybody to feel safe because when it comes to be your turn, you don't want people to be mean. <laughs> so here's ways that you can start off compliments. Things like, I really liked your topic. You used a lot of good details. I liked it when you used the word blah, blah, blah. My favorite part of your writing was whatever and because. So here, there are some ideas for you. So let's start. Hi, Tyler. We're gonna start with mine. And yes, I know it's terrible, but that's why we're gonna start with mine. However, even though it's bad, we've got to find something to compliment me on. So I'm going to read it for you. I'm going to tell you about James and the Giant Peach, a book I read for book club. James was a boy who had a good life until his parents died and he had to live with his aunts. He found green crystals and then made a giant peach. He had an adventure with bugs. James and the Giant Peach is a good book. Okay, it's not that great, but we got to find something to compliment me on. So, any um, any ideas? You could type it into the chat, or it'd probably be easier if you just raised your hand. Anything that I did well? Or anything that you liked? <laughs> uh, um, I liked... How he find the sense that how he found green crystals, then made a giant peach. Okay, what do you like about that, Barrow? That was an interesting part. Yeah, it was an interesting part. Really, all I can say that I did well was I had the main points, and I put them in the correct order. That's really the only thing that I think is very good about this paragraph. And that's okay. I did that on purpose. Jaden, you have something? Yeah. Um, I liked <laughs> the part where you, where you said he had an adventure with bugs. I just liked that. Oh, had an adventure with bugs. Okay, so he liked the way that that was worded. Michael, do you have something you can compliment me on before we go into um, making suggestions? <laughs> um, I like when you say James and the Giant Peach is a good book. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I did at least give the reader a feeling that I liked it, but we could definitely make it better. So we're going to go on to our next step, which is actually making suggestions. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, suggestions. I need to be specific. When I give somebody a, a suggestion, I can't just say, change your boring words. I need to say something to the effect of, when you use the word good, you could use the word exceptional instead, because it's a better, more powerful word. Or great. Yeah, that's even better than good, yes. Instead of saying, oh, it just doesn't make sense, you need to say, well, if you added more details, your paragraph would be more clear. Notice how I'm, you have to stay kind of positive and you can't be mean to the person. You have to, you know, try to give real suggestions. 
Okay, so here we go. We're gonna go back to my piece. And then I'm gonna show you this rubric one more time because I really wanna get a five, okay? So to get a five, my topic sentence needs to capture the reader's attention and give clues to what's coming up. Does my topic sentence catch your attention? Not right now. So let's change it so I can actually be a little bit more interesting. This part right here is terrible. I'm going to tell you about. Never start off a writing piece like that. You don't need to say, I'm going to tell you about James and the Giant Peach. Just by reading the paragraph, I know that that's what it's about. So just take that out. James and the Giant Peach is a book filled with magic, adventure, and danger. Woo! Give me a thumbs up if you think that that topic sentence is a lot better than the one that I just had. I think so. All right, Michael has a suggestion for me. Go ahead. Um, I liked how you said magic, adventure, and danger. Yeah, oh good. See, I liked this part too. This is much more specific than saying the book is good. <laughs> This is just a lot better wording. Hey, um, why do I keep on getting muted, muted when I um, don't even talk? I know, I'm, I'm getting a little feedback and I think it might be your microphone. Um, so if, if you just stay super, super quiet mm -hmm. until it's time to, um, to talk or whatever, it, it'll probably work. But I get a little bit of feedback sometimes, so. Okay. A book I read for book club. Ooh. Anybody have any suggestions on how I can make that sentence better? <laughs> I have one. Okay, go ahead. I, I read Dreams in the Giant P Peach for book P club. Okay. book club, but I ended up loving it. How about that? I read this book for book club, but I ended up loving it. Now I'm going to get into the actual, um, the actual meat of this paragraph. James was a boy who had a good life until his parents died and he had to live with his aunts. Huh. That's not too bad, but maybe I can change this word good. Is there a word? You had a wonderful life? Yeah, sure. Wonderful life. Oops, sorry. I scrolled up too fast. Wonderful life, comma, until his parents died. I'm going to stop there for just a second. And I think I'm going to make these two different sentences. Michael, can you tell me how his parents died? Um, they got eaten by a... Um, what did they get eaten by? A rhinoceros. Rhinoceroses, yes, a rhinoceros. They didn't oh. get eaten, they got... Yeah, they got eaten. Okay. Or very good. Rhinoceros. I'm spelling that wrong, but you know what? We're going to get to a part where we make corrections and we can fix spelling errors in just a minute. Okay. And he had to live with his aunts. That's not very detailed. That's pretty boring. Who can make Andy had to live with his aunts more detailed? Go ahead, Dakota.
um, he had to live with his green ants. Okay, so that's better. He had to live with his mean ants. What did his mean ants do? Will. Abused him. Okay, so I'm making this sentence a lot better. He had to live with his mean ants who abused him. Much more clear. He found green crystals and made a giant peach. Hmm. How did he that find doesn't, That doesn't seem... Yeah, go ahead, Dayton. What were you going to say? <sighs> I just... I was just going to say this that just didn't make much sense and it needs to be seen. But I'll help you um get um a better sentence. Okay, yeah, go ahead, Jaden. How can I make this more specific? Like, how did he find the green crystals? Okay. A old man actually gave him the crystals. Okay. Okay, an old man gave James green crystals, but when he dropped them, it made a giant peach. Okay. Do you like the word made, or can we use a different verb that's better? Will. Grew? Will, did you have a verb that's better than made? Grew. Grew. Okay, that's better. He had an adventure with bugs. Michael, give me more detail about the adventures that he went on. Mm, he f oh, I can't think today. Well, maybe just tell me one adventure that he went on. Um, he flew where the clouds were, and then he, the, they saw cloudmen, and then the centipede yelled at the cloudmen. Good, and okay. Then got into a fight. The clouds oh. got mad at them. The cloudmen got mad at them. That's perfect. So I'm just going to be real general, though. So he had an adventure with bugs over the clouds and the ocean. And I got an idea from Vero that she typed into the chat and she wants me to say he had an exciting adventure with bugs over the clouds and ocean. This part is kind of confusing for me. Where was he at? Okay, go ahead, Vero. Are we going to present our book reports today? Um, I'm not sure what you mean because this was our only assignment was to write this paragraph. So, which... That, that's what I mean. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. We're going to get to a couple more people. And if you want to have yours be peer edited next, that'll be fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Me. All right. Um, sorry, so I was asking. That's funny. Um, with bugs. That part's not very clear to me, so maybe I can change it to he had an exciting adventure in the peach. In the flying over the clouds and the ocean. Mm -hmm. Now I need to say something about the bugs. Were they his friends? What did he learn from them? Go ahead, Dakota. Um, the bugs were big and they were good friends too. Okay. How about I say James shared the peach with big bugs 
that. What did the bugs do, Tyler? Did they help James? Did they teach him anything? They helped him with stuff. What did they help him with? Um, they helped him catch the seagulls. Well, they helped him learn about himself. I was trying to be a little bit more general. They helped him learn to have confidence, right? Because he ran away from home, basically. And learn to be happy again. So James shared the peach with bugs that taught him how to be happy again. James and the Giant Peach is a good book. Um, Michael, help me make this conclusion sentence better. Mm. Sorry, Michael, go ahead. You're unmuted, Michael. Go ahead. James and the Giant Peach is a good book. Do you have any suggestions for me? Remember, our conclusion should leave the reader with a feeling. So, here. Look, Michael. Um, no, you're not. You're not muted anymore. I know you're not. Um, yeah. Maybe on your screen you are, but. Not on mine. You know what? I'm gonna take an idea from Will. Go ahead, Will. Um, maybe it was like a adventurous book. Okay. <coughs> adventurous. Okay, I'm not spelling today. Adventurous, good book. Mm, yeah. James and the Giant Peach is an adventurous book that made me feel. How did it make you feel, Jaden? Did it make you feel happy? Yeah, it made me feel happy. Okay. Just Happy, um, hmm, when, let's see, I could just leave it there, made me feel happy, but let's use a stronger word than happy. Testing, hey, testing. Yeah, we can hear you, Michael, so why don't you go ahead and, um, let's have a different word other than happy. Excited. Okay. Perfect. Excited for James to start a new life. Woo! Give me a thumbs up if you think that we just made this paragraph better. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, I'm sending them. Yes. Our, sorry, Michael. See, so you got a little feedback there again, but that's okay. Our next step is to make corrections. Corrections are when things are 100% wrong and have to be fixed. Corrections are things like spelling errors, grammar mistakes, um, things that you just cannot get around fixing. Like you cannot leave an incomplete sentence or a run-on sentence. If something isn't capitalized and needs to be, you can't just leave that. So. Let's look back at my paragraph. And right away, look at the very beginning. What did I forget to do? Caps lock J. Uh, yep, I capitalized J, but at the very beginning of a paragraph, you need to do something. What did I forget? Tyler. And then. Yes, I forgot to make that. the five spaces. There you go, perfect. Then, you might not know this, but you're gonna know it now. Anytime you talk about a book, you need to underline it. So, 
I'll go and underline it. And look at Dakota. He is fixing my spelling error. Do you see him typing that in? Perfect. Rhinoceros. Awesome. Thank you, Dakota. Were there any other errors, like spelling errors or capitalization errors that you noticed? Go ahead, Dakota. You forgot to capitalize and. Oh, okay. Well, right here, I didn't name them. I just, you know, ants is not a proper noun. That's actually a common noun. If I would have said ant spiker and ant sponge, I definitely would have had to capitalize it. So let's change it because that's more specific anyway. His mean ant spiker and ant sponge. Good. And then I forgot to underline the title again. Perfect. Any other mistakes, things with spelling or grammar that you noticed? Mm -mm. Nope. Okay, so then we are ready to move on. Do I have any volunteers to have Me. their paragraph peer edited next? Me. Okay, let's take Michael's. <clears throat> Michael, go ahead and read your summary for us. I'm going to talk about James and the Giant Peach. This is a good book. I read I read it for book club. Cheese man. I like it. It is really good. It's okay. Take your time. Jeez. I'm having problems reading. It's just so cold in my house. Oh, okay. Would you like me to read it for you, Michael? Yeah, that would be nice. Okay. I'm going to talk about James and the Giant Peach. This is a book I read for book club. I liked it. It was really good. James was happy until his mom and dad died. Then he had to live with his aunt, aunts, which were not very nice at all. Later, an old man gave him these little green things and told him what to do with them. He dropped them on the ground next to a peach tree that never grew peaches. After a while, it grew a giant peach. James went into the peach and found big bugs. He made friends with the bugs, and they cut the branch that held the peach and rolled into the ocean. After a while, they caught some seagulls, and they made the peach... Oops. Sorry. It scrolled down on me. Sorry about that. After a while, they caught the, some seagulls and made the peach... It's fine. Then they saw the cloud men, and one of the bugs yelled at them, and they were attacked by the cloud men. They got away from the cloud men and floated into a city, and a plane cut all the strings that were connected to the peach. They landed on the Empire State Building. People were scared, thinking that they were aliens. James introduced all of them. When they got to the peach down, the kids ate the peach. All that was left was stone. James made a book. James made a book about his adventure and the bugs got jobs. They lived happily ever after. Okay. First thing, let's give Michael compliments. Ow. Go ahead, Will. Um, it had, like, it told almost every part of the book. It didn't leave out, like... He what they did out. once they got to New York. That's right. He was very specific and gave all of the main events, definitely. Any other compliments? To me, I don't think Michael made very many spelling errors or grammar errors, so he did pretty good there. Actually, my mom wrote it. I just... You told yeah, she typed. Yeah, she typed. I told. Gotcha. Okay. Either way, that is just fine, Michael, because really it was a very detailed piece. Now, to make suggestions, let's start with this topic sentence. Going back to our rubric, 
Does that topic sentence catch your attention and give you clues about what's coming next? Uh, I think it could be maybe a little stronger. So, remember what I said about never starting a paragraph with I'm going to tell you about? Let's take that out. Okay. James, yeah. James and the Giant Peach is a book I, I read for book club. I just noticed something. Okay. Um, where's the word good? I forgot where the word good is. Oh, uh, we'll probably come to it here in a second. Do you have a better word instead of good? Great. Okay, so when we get to it, we'll change it, okay? And your dog like is very cute it. now. She has a sweater on. Oh. See, it was a really good... Oh, you erased book. Ah, oops. Okay. I liked it. It was a really good book. Tell me a little bit more about why you liked it, Michael. Um, it was, it was filled with excitement, danger, stuff like that. Okay. And I, and one of my favorite parts is when the, um, the streets got filled with chocolate. Oh yeah, that was a good part. Anybody else have any suggestions for Michael on how to make... Oh, and, okay, go oh, ahead. Can you change good to great? Yes. <laughs> All right. James was happy until his mom and dad died. Can I um, take suggestions on the word happy? Maybe a, a better word than happy? Um, there's a better word than happy. I think so. Um, you know, Dakota or Will or Vero or Tyler or Jaden might be able to think of a word that describes James before his parents died. Go ahead, Will. Living a good life. Ah, okay. No, great life. Good. James was living a great life until his mom and dad died. Okay. Then he had to live with his aunts, which were not very nice at all. I'm going to change that to who were not very nice at all. That's my suggestion to make it sound a little better. Okay. Later, an old man gave him these little green things. Jaden, do you have a word that's better than little green things? Crystals. No, that... Crystals. Good. So, Dakota, go ahead and change it to crystals. And all of you, are, um, if you are looking at the Google Doc on your own screen, you're able to type directly onto this document. Um, all of us can type at the same time. So, um, I'm not on what page you're on. Oh, so okay. I can't type it. Okay, well, Dakota is, and he is typing it for you. These little green crystals, that's C-R-Y-S-T-A. He's typing it for us right now. S-T-A-L-S. -S. Comma. And told him what to do with them. Um, Tyler, do you have any suggestions for Michael on on this little part of the sentence? How can I make that stronger? How can I change it and make it sound better? What is? One sec, mom. What is that thing? And told him what to do with them. Maybe. Um, what did the old man promise with uh, with those crystals? That it would never be miserable again. 
Okay, so can we can we type that in? and promised he would never be miserable. Doc. Um, I actually I sent it to you. So through your email, you should be able to pull it up because we're all on this Google Doc together. Okay. I'm gonna minimize this thing. Cool. Me. He dropped them on the ground next to the peach that never Mux. peaches. After yeah. a while, it grew a giant peach. Somebody give me a suggestion on how I can combine those two sentences. I can combine those and make it better. Any ideas? Okay, well, I'll show you what I was thinking because these are kind of really similar, so I'm going to combine it. He dropped them on the ground next to a peach tree that never grew peaches, comma, but after he spilled the crystals, it grew a giant peach. Much better. That's called a compound sentence. We have two thoughts together. James went into the peach and found bugs. Mm. Saw bugs? Yeah, that, that's a little better. Any ideas on um, or suggestions on maybe the word found? Something a little stronger? Anyone? Saul. He saw bugs. Yeah, yeah, he saw him. But... Go ahead, Vero. He's... He's going to type I... it in. Okay. I was thinking something. And met big bugs, maybe? Google Drive. Okay. I'm going to Google Drive. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Oh. It's just an exercise on how to pull up a Google Doc, too, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, Will, you are on there. You um, have figured it out because you're highlighting right now, actually. All right. See, that's you highlighting, Will. <laughs> He made friends with the bugs, and they cut a branch that held the peach and rolled into the ocean. On a scale of one to five, five being the most important part of the book, one being kind of just an extra detail. Show me with your um, with your fingers if you think that's important. Five is the most important part of the book. One is, eh, not very. One of the books, not all the books yelled at the cloud men. Right. Just, I'm, I'm looking at just that one sentence. He made friends with the bugs and they cut the branch. They held the peach and rolled into the ocean. Am I on? Okay. Do you think five means that that's really important? One means it's not very important to the story. Hold up your fingers. There wasn't, no, there wasn't five branches on the tree holding the peach. Oh, I know, Michael. I'm just saying on a scale of one to five, do you think that that's really important or can we take it out? So I think it's kind of important to know how they got in the ocean. Okay, well then we'll leave it. You don't have to take my suggestion. That's part of um, suggestions. You don't have to change it. After a while, they caught some seagulls, and it made the peach float. All right. We should actually make it fly, not float. Yes, that's kind of what I was thinking. So I'll change that. Fly above the ocean. The ocean. Perfect. Well, it's weird that it's not T-I-O-N. Yeah. The shun sound. That is kind of strange. It's one of those 
funky words in our English language. Okay. Then they oh. saw cloud men, and one of the bugs yelled at them, and they were attacked by the cloud men. One They're of the in. five. One of the, um, the centipede, uh, I can't think. Sorry. That's okay. How many people think that this is a really important part of the book, and it has to stay in the paragraph? What, um... Hold up a five if you think it's really super important and has to stay. Hold up a one if you think I can get rid of this detail. Okay, so most people think it's important, so we're going to leave it. So we're going to make it correct then because there's a couple grammatical errors. Instead of they, I'm going to say James. I'm going to be more specific, and I'm going to say James and the bugs saw cloud men, comma, and one of the bugs yelled at them. Who, which one of the bugs? It was the caterpillar, right? No, the centipede. 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 Sorry, yeah, sorry. Centipede yelled at them. Well, actually, well, if there's just a centipede, it just sounds like there's one bug. Um, let's reread the entire thing, and then you tell me. James and the bugs saw cloudmen, and the centipede yelled at them, so they were attacked by the cloudmen. Hmm. You like the I way guess, that sounds? Yeah. Okay, then we'll I'm just, leave it. I'm kind of tired. I understand. I am too. But we're almost done. Let's skip down to your conclusion sentence. They lived happily ever after. Now, does that, you know what I'm going to do to make this conclusion sentence better? I'm going to combine last few sentences all together into one. And I'm going to make it better because... One really good sentence is going to be better than these four kind of choppy sentences. So just listen. When they got the peach down, all of the kids ate the peach. All that was left was the stone. James made a book about his adventure and the bugs got jobs. They lived happily ever after. I guess you could put that into a big sentence. Yeah. At the end of the story... James wrote a book about his adventure, and the bugs got jobs. <laughs> All of the characters ended up living a happy, full life. What do you think? Is that better? Yeah, yes, it is. it is. Oh, and I just I noticed see. something about yes. my James and the Giant Peach. Yeah. 50 anniversary. Oh, that's crazy. It is. It's an old book, but it's a good one. Now, the next step is to make corrections. Did we see any spelling errors or any other grammar errors that he needed to fix? Do you remember what I said about um, the title of books? Tyler, what do I have to do for the title of books? Underline. Yeah. Underline it. Good. Okay. So there we go. I think that we've made this um, a whole lot better. This is a much more cohesive yeah. paragraph. So, Michael, looking at the rubric, I would give you a five. Because now the paragraph is clear and interesting. Okay. You have an introduction that grabs my attention and gives clues. You have details. Your details came in order in the right place. And we made a good conclusion together as well. So that's all right, Dakota. You can add your piece to the same Google document, and then that would be fantastic. So here's what I'm going to leave you guys with today. I'm going to leave you a little bit early 
so that you can practice this. If you can pull up your Google Doc, so here, let me just show you how to get to your Google Docs. I know how to now. Okay, good. You go to your drive. Uh, what? No. I know how to get to the drive. <laughs> okay. So I emailed this to you, and so you should be able to get to it in a lot of different ways. What I would like you to do is to go okay. um, scroll down and find other students that you would like to peer edit. So what you'll do is you got to change the color. So let's say I have a suggestion for Tyler. I'm going to say, Tyler, I think you should do this. I really liked this. Make sure you give him a compliment. Just change the color so that Tyler would be able to see that and know to go back later, okay? So give me a thumbs up if you are okay with getting on here and peer editing each other's work. It'll be kind of fun. I want you to choose one other student's paragraph to read, okay? You don't have to do all of them. Just do one other person. Just do all right, guys. It has been fun. Um, I'm going to stay on for just a second and answer a couple of Will's uh, questions into the chat. You guys, I want you to start reading each other's work. Okay. Thing off. How do I turn the meeting off? Um, there should be a red button on the top of your control panel. Can I go? Yeah, you can, but I'd like you to um, you know, stay on here and pick one other student's piece to peer edit when you get a minute, okay? Okay. Um I'll do Tyler? Okay, good. Remember the steps. You need to give suggestions, I'm sorry, give compliments, give suggestions, and then make corrections if you see any um, spelling or grammar or punctuation errors. Okay. And I'm here to answer questions. Um. Yes, Michael. Oh and actually, uh, go ahead, Lucas. What's your question? Um, sorry, I was kind of late. I was, I was uh, thinking about my uh, my paragraph. I'm uh, still, I uh, I'm still working on it. Um, but can I see how you uh, got into this uh, James and the Giant Peach? Um, Are we 11... having it here? Yeah. How to get to yeah. the Google Doc? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna make it really, really easy. If okay. I share it with you again, it's gonna show up in your email. And that's all okay. you'll have to do. Is just okay. go into your email 
and you will have a new message from me with it on here. Okay? Okay. Cute. Cool. And Will, I'm going to cut and paste yours onto the document, okay? okay. Give me one second, and I'm going to go get it and paste it on here so somebody else can read yours. It's coming up, Will. I'm just, it takes a minute. We are. 